All right, Al. Today is the day, December fifteenth. It is D Day. It's, it's uh, it's become like it's become the new trade deadline. You know what I mean? The pre-trade mm-hmm. deadline. Today's the day when all these free agent acquisitions are eligible to be traded. Now, over the past couple of weeks, obviously the biggest name from the Knicks perspective has been Marcus Morris. We we are hearing uh Woj and and, uh, and Zach Lowe did their did their trade uh show on ESPN today today actually earlier this evening. And Zach Lowe is claiming that the Clippers are interested in Mook and could be willing to trade Mo Harkless, Patrick Peterson, and a first. Where are Patrick you? Patterson, pa- Patrick, Patrick Patterson. Patrick Patterson. <laughs> yeah. The, Where's Patrick Peterson? <laughs> yeah. Wrong, <laughs> wrong sport. Cardinals. Wrong, wrong sport. <laughs> wrong sport. But um, where are you at on, on trading move period? And, and how do you, how would you like this potential trade? I'm conflicted. Like it, it all comes down to things are kind of different in the NBA with this. I feel like, um, I mean, we see this in baseball relatively often where yeah. if a team has nothing to play for, the Yankees, for example, right. a lot of people who watch this show are probably Yankees Chad, fans. Chad. I know that you are as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not, but, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, they did that with Chapman. You know, they trade, and actually the Mets did it with Jay Bruce as well. I yeah, think they did. In that same year um, it, where you could trade a guy away who's on an expiring deal and then, you know, kind of handshake agreement with them and say, hey, we'd like to have you back if you mm-hmm. want to come back in the offseason. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like you don't really see that happen much in the NBA, but it, I don't know if it's necessarily, you know, unprecedented. Like, it, it could probably happen um, for the Knicks if they decided to do it, and there's nothing prohibiting them from re-signing more should they trade him away. Uh, so, I mean, I said the same thing about Noah Vonley last year, actually. Uh, you know, yeah. there was reports about maybe him being available via trade, and you know, should the Knicks trade him? Should they not? He was a valuable piece. You know, he looked pretty good. He looked like he was a good reclamation project. Um, and, you know, I, my thought then was, like, trade him away, but be nice to him. Give him a handshake on the way out and be like, look, man, like, this is a business. We have to make a business move because we have to get the future assets. But we would absolutely love to have you back this offseason. Thanks for doing this. But we can give you an opportunity for the rest of the season to play for a contender and, you know, play for a team that has something to something to play for this year, rather than just sticking it out with our team. And you can pick right back up where you left off. If you come back this off season, we'll go right back to it next season and do it all over again. Um, so that's kind of what I would do with, with Morris and like the unique position that the Knicks are in, in regards to this too. And this is, this plays back into the baseball thing, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, in baseball, there's unlimited money. So you can do whatever you want as mm-hmm. long as you can afford it. In basketball, you have the salary cap to play with, but the Knicks are in the unique position where they have no long-term money committed this offseason, too. Right, right. So they could come right back at Morris and hit him with another one- or two-year overpay deal like they did this year and exactly. give him that money again. Get so, that back. Yeah, I think – I mean, if you could get – if it's if it's Mo Harkless, Patrick Patterson, and a first-round pick, I mean, Harkless is a somewhat useful player by himself. Right. Patterson is filler, whatever. That's fine. He's just there for the salary. But the first-round pick, I mean, that's valuable uh, for – no matter who ends up in the front office, like if there's one thing that this front office has proven to be pretty decent at, it's drafting. So you get yourself, and especially in the the late stages of the draft, rather mm-hmm. than you could argue whether the lottery picks have been home runs or not. Um, but the you know certainly in the later stages in of the, the draft, yeah, they're good. You know, so if yeah. you get a late first round pick out of Marcus Morris, then take it and run. And you know, again, you're the Knicks are in a unique position where they have no long term money committed, and they can right. just come right back to Morris and say, look, we'll, we'll pay you again. You know, yeah, we'll give you a it's, ton it's of money. 20, to- it's 25. You know, yeah. Like you said, it doesn't hurt him. That yeah. doesn't hurt him in the short term. Mm-hmm. I listen, I I'm with you. I'm with, I'm with a lot of people. I like what he's brought to this team. I like the leadership that he's brought. I like the toughness that he's brought. Obviously he's been one of our clutch players having a career season points, rebounds, three point shooting. One of the best three point shooters in the league. No doubt about it. I love how he's, uh, I love how he's, he's really, even though, you know, we used to call him a bootleg mellow dollar tree mellow. I really didn't know how much mellow had an impact on him. You know, when he really, when they played Portland and he really talked about, really was complimentary about Melo and how much Melo's had an impact on his career. And also his last quote was basically um, quoting Melo and saying, you know, Melo said, a lot of guys can't play here. I want to show I can play here. I want to show that I could be a leader for this team. And that really resonated with me. But, you know, the sentimental stuff, 
it, it means nothing until the contract is signed. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I think I'm with you. I go to him and I say, listen, you know, for the second half of the season, go play for something real. If it's the Clippers, you got a legit shot of winning a championship. That's not happening right now. <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's not happening here. So if that's the case, you know, we want to upgrade the talent on this team. You have to trade him. You have to trade him if you can get into the first round. Number one, mm-hmm. we need talent. We need more talent on this team. This team is desperate for more shooting. They're desperate for more uh, rim protection. And obviously, maybe it comes in the lottery, but I think, yeah, we can still use an upgrade at the point guard. So you got to try to trade him. I'm, tra- I'm trading him. If I can get a first-round pick, I'm absolutely trading him with the intention of, of bringing him back in the, in the next season. No doubt about it. Yeah, and I'm actually even looking to see the Clippers here, see what uh, what picks they have. Available. They have next. They have this coming um, draft. They can trade this one, and according to Macri. Own. Yeah, according yeah. to Macri, they can trade this pick this year. They have this year's pick that they can trade. They can. They can trade their own pick. I was looking to see if they had someone else's or something, yeah. but they only have their own pick. But that's fine. I mean, that's great. Um, you know, just take their own pick and and run with it. I think. Um, you know, and like, I think there's, there's a real case to be made that, you know, like you just said, get talent, you know, you need talent. And the the, the last couple of years, I think have shown that there's, if you have the right evaluators and the right guys slip and stuff like that, you can get real talent in the, the late first round. I mean, I was a huge, huge, huge Brandon Clark guy uh, coming into the draft this past year. And he's been awesome so far. And he got taken with what the 22nd pick or something yeah, like that. He, he was later in the um, first. Yep. He fell and, you know, same with uh, Thibuel, you know, he, mm-hmm. he also fell and it's like, dude, these, these type of guys fall, man. And, and they're the types that aren't necessarily going to turn into superstars, but they're the guys that you could maybe even argue that Frank is kind of looking like he's developing into now, which is defense first, you know, make team plays, you know, they're going to look around the, the floor and, and try to hit guys and, and not, um, you know, they're not necessarily going to be superstars, but they'll be really quality role players that you can find in that general, you know, 20 to 25 to 30, whatever range. You know, there's yeah. always guys like that if you have the right talent evaluators. There was even, I mean, Mitchell Robinson almost went in that, ra- in that range too because the Lakers almost gave him uh, a guarantee a couple of years ago, which mm-hmm. God, imagine if they had <laughs> with the team that they have now. Facts. If they have Mitchell Robinson and Anthony Davis. You know oh, I mean? man. So, you got you got uh, Mitch running around with LeBron. Forget about it, man. Forget yeah, it. Uh, he'd be catching lobs, like, from the other side of the court, mm-hmm. practically. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's it's important. And, you know, it's it's like you said, you know, you got to put the sentimental stuff aside. You know, you can't it, – it, it's cool. Like, I want to be attached to Marcus Morris. And, and I, I would say that I am at this point. You know, I, I think he's a really good dude. Um, I think he's saying all the right things. He's, it seems like a really good leader yeah. for the kids, yeah. you know, like it seems like he's putting forth a really good example for them. Um, I've actually had the privilege of being in the locker room, you know, um, for sports illustrated now a little bit. And, you know, he's, he's definitely one of the guys that carries some gravity. He's the guy that almost after every single game speaks to the media, regardless of nope. play or the outcome or anything, he's willing to take all the bullets for all the young kids, you know? Yeah. Um, it, so he's a great guy to have around, no doubt. And I maybe. I don't know if I would trade him like today, like on day one of right. you know the trading period. Right. But when it comes time for the deadline, I think it's time to to send him out. But send him out like with a firm handshake and like a look, man. Let's talk again in the summer. That's what I say. And as you back. said, we can go to the depths that no other other teams may not go. You know, mm-hmm. on a shorter term deal. Oh, the Knicks. The Knicks next year. Screw it, man. Just be like, uh, Mook. We'll give you twenty million dollars for one year. Like, yeah. just come back again. Just come back for a second year with us. Because then, so uh, all right. Not to get too caponomics here, mm-hmm. but it, you know, if you offer a guy a huge overpay like that, then you get what's called early bird rights with him. And so, you know, Marcus Morris. If you offer him twenty million dollars next year, he's never getting twenty million dollars again in his life. You know what I mean? Like, not for a single season. He's just not that guy. And, you know, so you can offer him that, but then with the early bird rights, then you get like a, 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 the ability to re-sign him. And you can also trade him places where teams can re-sign him in the off season to a hundred, hundred and five percent, I think of his, of his salary for that one year. Mm. So, you know, the, even if he ends up getting traded again, you know, he's going to be an attractive trade piece a second time in a row, 
or you know the Knicks will get some sort of rights to re-signing him, even if they only sign him to a one-year overpay. So it's just kind of the the good thing with the system, you yeah. Know, how everything works out for them, but yeah, I would definitely, I, I would definitely try to bring him back and you know leverage your unique situation for a second year in a row and and try to just overpay him again and bring him back in the offseason. Uh, absolutely, man. What what do you guys think in the chat, man? Give us a call. What do you guys think about these uh, trade rumors? Six five seven three eight three one five zero nine. Let us know what you think. Uh, Al, on another uh, trade front, the the Ujiri talks. Obviously, it's never ending. You know, with the yeah. Fizdale ouster. With Mills hopefully on his way next, it's been rumored, obviously, that that Dolan is after Ujiri Hardbody. We know, obviously, he's on the contract with Toronto. We first heard that it's going to cost one pick, and now Begley's coming out with... Well, it's not from a source, but basically, Begley's article basically said that, um, you know, in another scenario where a team tried to trade for a GM, the asking price was two firsts. Right, so he, so the the assumption is that a new jury is going to command the same. Um, what, what do you think about that? About trading trading for Ujiri? That's that's I don't know. What do you think? Here's my, I guess my overall thought on it at this point. And I know that we just literally two seconds ago talked about you need talent, you need late first round picks, you need <laughs> this, you need that. But like, if you could get Ujiri, who's a clear, I mean, he's a winning team builder. He's a championship builder now. You know, he's, there was always kind of the talk with Ujiri before last year about like, oh, he builds good rosters, but can he build a championship team? And, you know, last year he did. And he made all the right calls to do that. And, you know, now he's got Toronto set up with, even after they lost Kawhi Leonard, they're set up with a new, you know, superstar in Siakam. Speaking of guys you can get with late first round picks that kind of blossom into something. Um, But, you know, it's, I think that he's the type of guy, the rare, rare executive where I would say, yeah, you know what? If it costs two first round picks, I think I'm all right with that. Cause I have faith that he'll get those back at some point sooner <laughs> rather than later, you know, and fleece somebody would, else for exactly the way that I would do it is I would just, I would offer up the two Dallas picks, I think is the way to go. Um, because I think that those are going to be late first rounders uh, yeah. with the Knicks picks. It's really risky. You can't really offer up your own picks no. right now for yeah. the Knicks. Cause they're so bad. You know, it's like, the Knicks could be bad for another three years, even with Ujiri. You never know, you know, and, and if they are, then their picks are going to continue being really, really valuable. So unless you could put like, you know, eternal top 10 protections on them or something or lottery protections, yeah. then, you know, you can't do that. It's it just because it's way too big of a risk. But those Dallas picks, ultimately, I don't think are going to end up being as valuable as we maybe had hoped they mm-hmm. would become. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems like the 2021 one, you know, you get – Luka Doncic out there for another two years or well this year and next year he's only going to get better presumably Porzingis whatever happens with him it seems like it doesn't matter how good or bad Porzingis is because Doncic is going to be good enough to make this team at least close to a playoff team you know for years and years to come so that 2021 pick will be a little less valuable the 2023 one is I believe top 20 protected or yeah. is just lottery protected Either way, it's it's pretty highly protected, and if it doesn't convey after one year, it turns into two second round picks. Facts. Um, Facts. So you know, it's like a sneaky first round pick. That one's like a first round pick. Right. You know what I mean? So I would trade those two, and if if they're willing to do that for Ujiri, then cool, do it. You know, I, I think that's I, it would kind of sting. Yeah. Because now you're essentially turning your Porzingis return into okay, you traded Porzingis for Dennis <laughs> Smith, who kind of looks <laughs> shitty. And Masai Ujiri, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's it. So you traded Porzingis for an executive, for but, an executive, you know, it, man. Oh. But it, it, when it's that executive, uh, I'm cool with it because nobody commands more respect than him around the it's NBA. True. I don't think at it's this true. point, and I think he really has the respect of players and agents and everything. So I, and he's, he seems like a great talent evaluator. On top yeah, of her, so. I, I would have to. Uh, I, I think the Dallas picks. I would lean more towards none of our picks. I wouldn't give up any of our picks. No. Um, not at all. No chance. I just feel like there are other options out there. Obviously, he's the, he's the creme de la creme. Hey, and, and we should know that as he's fleeced us many times um, and built that Toronto team. Took the, as you said, gambled on 100%, trading their, their heart and soul to get Ka- Kawhi Leonard and getting that chip. Trading a coach of the year <laughs> the, the previous season. And and everything just hit right for them. 
it's it's just such a, it's just such a nick thing to do but it's like damn this mm -hmm. is this is the guy right now you could argue that it's a nick thing to do or you could argue it's an unnick thing to do you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. it's it, it's one way or the other and the only way that's going to determine what it ends up being is how the outcome turns out you know if, if the knicks end up turning into something because of this then it's the most genius move in franchise history if uh if you know Masai comes and nothing gets fleeced, the Knicks. yeah, if he gets fleeced or if nothing becomes the Knicks, you know, over his tenure, then it's oh, like, man. well, you just wasted two more first round picks for nothing, you know, yeah. and it's just a typical Knicks move. So it's it's like a it's like it's a win lose, you know, it's, it's a, like a coin flip, you know, you never know. But I I think it would be the right move. I think I don't think you could look at that and be like, well, that was a bad choice because yeah. the Knicks have craved and particularly dolan has craved that kind of you know presence at the top for so long and he's got such a man crush on Masai that you know that whatever Masai would ask for give it to him give him give, yeah, him, give him. him full autonomy full hiring power full firing power everything give you know him. he would give Masai everything he'd give him 50 million dollars a year to his his foundation you yeah. know whatever the hell Masai wanted he would get so facts facts that's, that's, i think it, uh i think it's the way to be it's like van gundy said man van gundy was on an interview with coach k earlier this week and he was kind of talking about his tenure there and what's going on now and his his whole thing was you know things haven't been right since dave check it's man and that was 20 years ago and from check it's it was, uh, I believe, Ernie Grunfeld was under that regime. Then, he, then with who did a pretty decent job. But then you had Layden. Then you had Isaiah Mills. You know, to fill the. It's just been a disaster, man. And we just have not had that solid structure, foundation from the top of people that you trust to make the right decision. Dolan trusts them, but they they just haven't been coming through for us, man. Have not mm -hmm. been coming through for us, so. I'd be open for it just for the sake of, like you said, that this is the guy, but definitely not our own picks. Um, who, or, or if you're going to do your own heavily protect, do them, protect them in the way the Dow's protected yeah. the 2023 one. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Make it so you you have to be good for it to convey as a first round pick. Who, who you think is the most likely player to be traded if there is a trade to me? Because that's, that's another thing. I don't, I don't think it's as guaranteed as we think that any one of these guys are getting traded. We're, we're coming from a position of desperation. That's never a good you, thing. Yeah. You mean like which Nick you think is most likely to yeah. be traded? Yeah. Um, I bet you – so there's a few trades I could see happening. Mm -hmm. I do think they're going to end up trading Morris. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that anytime I feel like you can get a first-round pick in season for a player in the NBA, you do it yeah. because it's so rare anymore. So I think they'll do that, uh, be with the Clippers or some other team. Some contender will want him. I mean, he's balling. Got to. Got by, to. Any, by any stretch, he's yeah. balling this yeah. year. Um, I think there's a decent chance Trier might get traded. I think that's my pick. I think I um, still. I think I probably Iceman feel like still. a second round pick, which yeah. is still I think puts the Knicks in the positive in that transaction. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I mean, I like Trier well enough uh, for what he does, but he kind of only does what he does. Um, he's a, he's a good ISO scorer, and you know he can get you a couple quick buckets. I had really high hopes for him this year. Maybe coming in as a uh, uh, catch and shoot type guy, learning under guys like Ellington and Bullock and all that. Um, and that just hasn't really happened yet. So I, I think that he's going to go because it seems if you read between the lines, it seems like there's some unrest with him, yeah. um, with the team and with maybe with management, with coaching and he's, he's catching DNPs again and stuff like that. So, um, he might go, uh, I guess I'm trying to think who else maybe I could see moving maybe Ellington, like if yeah, you could find a team that wants him for a second round pick or something he's kind of fallen out of the rotation mm -hmm. or no he's been hurt i'm sorry he's been hurt yeah he's had the Achilles. So, yeah even so he's been up and down in the rotation you know with the team this year so i could see him potentially um you know getting moved and, and just to a team that wants a little auxiliary shooting and he'd be a good value for any team that wants that because yeah. they have the second year option as well so if you trade him to a team that's capped out they can keep him for a second year uh only for paying the luxury tax or whatever on him. So mm. teams might be interested in that. Um, maybe even Gibson, if I'm being honest, but Tosh, I feel like yeah. Gibson, they're going to keep around. We got to keep kinda, Tosh. I think he's turned into a heart and soul type guy. Yeah, I, gotta I don't keep really Tosh. think he's going to go. Uh, only other guy, maybe. I, I don't think any of the any of the uh, core young guys are going to go no, for sure. Yeah. Um, 
I can maybe, maybe see them moving Peyton, but Peyton's proving to be really crucial to this yeah. team as a whole right yeah. now. So yeah. Peyton would have to elevate his value to a Morris level of being able to fetch a first round pick or something. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he'll ever hit that. I don't think so. Um, I, I so don't think he get much from Portis either. Yeah, so they'll probably hold on him. The only other guy, maybe Portis, if some team is just really desperate for some scoring off the bench or something. Yeah. Maybe, but uh, Portis is so streaky that I feel like any good team – with anything to play for, wouldn't necessarily be willing to give up <laughs> yeah. anything for him. I'm not giving you, know? you anything for that guy. I, I, you could almost just turn him into a spot up three point shooter at this point. Like yeah. he's he flashes that sometimes mm-hmm, where you mm-hmm. think like if you could just set him up where he could sit in the corner and just yeah. shoot threes. Be Don't like do a, anything cool, else. <laughs> be like a glorified Steve Novak, you know, Facts. with a little bit of a post game. Like <laughs> yeah. Don't put the ball on the floor and just shoot. Yeah. That's yeah. It. I mean, he could he could maybe fill that role well enough. Um, but I can't see anybody trading anything of substance nah. for him, especially when he makes fifteen million and you got to find matching salaries, and it, it would just be too much work too much. for someone that probably isn't worth it, you know. Too too much, man. But I, I agree with you in that order. I think it's Morris. I think it's ISO and, and potentially Ellington. I think those are the the most realistic moves. Maybe Dotson. Maybe Dotson gets moved. I feel like they're gonna hold on to Dotson because I actually so? think that Miller really likes him. Mm. Based off, I mean, tonight was different. Tonight yeah. he only played seven minutes. Um, but I think that was just situational. I, I think in general, Miller really likes it. Yeah, I like that. I, I would love to keep him. I, I would love I to would keep too. him. Um, I just think with ISO, as you said, it looks like obviously he's falling out of favor with the rotation. Uh, obviously, well, not obvious, but it's likely that we get more help in the backcourt in this draft. So once again, that's another player to add to, to this mix. I, I think ISO gets slid out. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, man. 